silver lining, right? I'm the I'm I'm the eternal optimist, so I'm always going to try to find some silver lining in any situation that we have. And I think the silver lining here is that we're seeing unfettered capitalism uh, failing, and hopefully it'll be dead soon. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And with that being the case, we are seeing America go through the five stages of grief. First, it started <laughs> with denial. You know, America denied that it could even get the virus, right? They were like, there's no fucking way. You know, if it comes to the States, we'll just write it a check to get it out of here. You know, we'll, we'll send it down to Mexico. That's what we'll do. We'll give it a check for $1,200 and then we'll put it on a Southwest uh, flight down to Mexico and be like, you sip yourself a pina colada and you say hi to Castro for me. <laughs> You know, and I even think the virus was like, hey, I don't think that's who's in charge of Mexico right now. I don't think that's ever been the case. <laughs> you know? But really, the question that we need to be asking is, is the virus ready for America? You know, is it ready to handle Americans themselves with a steady diet of McDonald's and Walmart food courts? Can the virus handle the American biological system? We don't know. We don't know. And then, of course, we moved right to anger. Now, this involved, uh, as we talked about earlier, uh, blaming China and hoarding uh, toilet paper. Uh, America doesn't really know how to uh, process anger. It often confuses it with, uh, you know, racism. Uh, so <laughs> it just gets very confused. It doesn't know how to process that emotion. But we did see uh, a, a wave of, uh, I, I think, angry, uh, misguided protesters that were against the current lockdown that went out there and championed for freedom and, and said, we got to open these states again because freedom um, and haircuts. Uh, because as everybody knows, as everybody knows, uh, a fresh fade is really what determines a free man. <laughs> which means that DJ Jazzy Jeff has been the freest motherfucker on the planet. <laughs> I wrote that joke and I didn't know who was going to get that reference, you guys. I'm old. <laughs> I'm glad a couple of you got it. <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> But I, I got to say, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't really understand the, the haircut argument, right? Uh, obviously, you can see I don't get the haircut argument. I don't know what these people are scared of. Uh, are they afraid that they'll, like, let their hair grow out just a little too much, you know, and then turn into, like, a hippie and start, like, caring about other people? <laughs> <laughs> and becoming vegetarian, and realizing that America isn't really d run on freedom, but just bailed authoritarianism there to keep you in corporate wage slavery forever. Like, I, you know, are they, just, are they afraid that they're going to look at a book and be like, oh, but you know what? I'm reading about the socialism thing. Not that bad. Not that bad, you guys. Doing pretty good, that socialism. <laughs> just don't get it. <laughs> but uh, after this, we arrive to the bargaining stage, which is uh, capitalism's favorite step, you guys. Big fan of bargaining. Now, during this process, we had the Democrats and the Republicans continue to posture on who can help the American people the most, right? There was a lot of arguing and squabbling about who was going to get credit for what, and that is important because when the revolution comes, we probably won't eat that one person who gave us the most money or signed their names on our stimulus checks. So, mm. and look, I am against the idea of eating the rich, okay? I am a pseudo vegetarian. Uh, and also I don't like tainted meats. <laughs> now, I'm 31 now, I really gotta watch my diet even when it comes to oligarchical cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> that trim figure baby got to keep that trim figure <laughs> but uh you know the bargaining stage landed with over five trillion dollars uh to corporations 
and Wall Street, which left uh, a little bit for uh, the struggling average American, we all got uh, one check of $1,200. And uh, if you think that's nothing, look, Steve Mnuchin, U.S. Treasury Department's own Steve Mnuchin pointed out that that $1,200 was supposed to last 10 weeks. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Proving once and for all that oligarchs truly don't understand how time uh, and money works. So. <laughs> now, if I did my calculations correctly, and I, I feel like I did, uh, that $5 trillion uh, that the banks received should last them approximately uh, 14 quadrillion years. So... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I think we're good by like not repaying any like loans or rents or mortgages or anything. You know, by my calculations, I mean Wall Street is going to outlive the sun, so they're doing <laughs> pretty good. You guys, they're doing pretty good. <laughs> now the oligarchy did bargain on behalf of some small businesses, right? They uh, they made some loans uh, that these small businesses were eligible for. Uh, and, uh, you know, if they kept most of their staff, that becomes a grant instead of a loan. But it was reported that some corporations were taking advantage of a loophole and getting a free $10 million on top of the corporate bailouts that they got. And once this became public knowledge, Steve Mnuchin looked at these companies and said that they have to return this money or face consequences. And what are those consequences? I mean, some of these involve uh, a stern talking to. Right. <laughs> Possible slaps on the wrist, okay? Or even a half-hearted use of the word disappointed. <laughs> I, would, I would not want to be these corporations. Huh? Don't, don't, don't you get on the bad side of Steve Mnuchin. <laughs> Now, after the, after the bargaining stage does, uh, does come the, the, the stage of, of depression. See, the way capitalism has been operating is kind of like a, a game of Jenga, right? Where, where they took out the bottom most piece and the whole tower falls apart. And, and before they can realize that they've made a mistake, uh, what they do is that they blame uh, the bottom most piece for being pulled out in the first place. And when they realize that they can't rebuild the top without actually having a foundation, uh, that's going to push them in a, in a pretty, uh, pretty low depression, you guys. They're going to be real sad uh, about all that. And finally, uh, the final stage of, <laughs> of grief is, uh, is acceptance. <laughs> I like that the d depression joke had a little bit of a delay to it. <laughs> but finally, it, it leads us to acceptance, uh, right? And, and this will come when we realize that capitalism is truly uh, an insane economic system, right? Insanity is the idea of uh, doing the same thing and expecting different results. Now, capitalism has been trying trickle-down economics where it helps the, the topmost, the, the most well-off, the most privileged, and, and uh, leaves virtually nothing for the most vulnerable and leaves us to fend for ourselves. The idea being that the most well-off will, will take some of those funds and give it to the most vulnerable if they feel like it. And the problem is they haven't felt like it uh, for like 2,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> Just like never, <laughs> never really done that, right? But capitalism keeps trying this idea. We continuously keep trying this idea repeatedly to failure. Over and over again, the system keeps coming up with this idea and it keeps failing. It keeps suggesting trickle down economics and says that it's gonna work, right? Capitalism is kind of like that X that says that they'll change if you take them back, but never does, you know? <laughs> Right? Capitalism was like, no, baby, this time it'll be different. You know, I'm going to regulate myself. I'll even let you unionize. 
<laughs> and then what happens? And then they try to steal your pants in your sleep. <laughs> Capitalism is the truest definition of insanity. And the sooner we accept that, the sooner we can be on to bigger and better things, right? Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this clip. If you enjoyed this clip, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button, you hit the like button, make sure that you share this content out. Usually content like this, this anti-establishment comedy content is not uh, shown to as many people uh, as it possibly could be. It does get suppressed quite often. So uh, if you can hit that share button, get the word out there. Uh, and tell folks that you enjoyed this video. And if you want to be a part of a live virtual comedy show, the next live virtual comedy show, the next Citizen Revolution comedy show is going to be on May 22nd. Uh, tickets are available for that right now, and then they'll be, um, they'll be happening every Friday uh, at 9 p.m. So tickets are available for these shows at krishmohan.com. That's K-R-I-S-H. M O H A N dot com. And you got to get your tickets uh, because that's how I'm going to be able to send you the Zoom login information so you can attend the show and we don't get any unwanted visitors in the Zoom show. So, like I said, the next one is on May 22nd. Grab your tickets and we'll see you there. Thanks again and we'll see you soon.